Hello! Welcome to Teach Me Maths. My name is Jonathan Hicks and we're doing proportionality. Now there's two kinds of proportionality. You have things that could be directly proportional to each other or inversely proportional to each other. I should say, if you say that one thing is proportional to the other, then that also means directly proportional. So you don't need the directly bit, just that sometimes we use the directly to distinguish it from the inversely proportional. Let me give you an example of each of these and then hopefully you'll get what they're about. So in the first case, two things are going to be proportional or directly proportional. Imagine you work some kind of job and you're getting paid five pounds per hour. So by the end of the day, your total pay, we'll call that P, is going to be the five pounds per hour that you get times the number of hours that you work. So we'll say that little h is the number of hours that you work. So as an example, imagine you worked for three hours, then your pay, P, is going to be five times three. Five times three is obviously 15. But let's say instead you worked for six hours. So if you worked for six hours, your pay is five pounds times the six hours will be 30 pounds by the end of the day. So if the number of hours you work doubles, so instead of working three hours, you work six hours, then the pay you get doubles as well. Yeah. So the three doubles to the six, that's the number of hours. The total pay, 15, doubles to 30 which hopefully makes sense. If you work twice as long, you should get paid twice as much. But equally, if you work three times as long, you should get paid three times as much. If you work four times as long, you should get paid four times as much. That relationship is what's called proportional. It's when, if one thing doubles, the other thing has to double as well, etc. So contrast that with inversely proportional. Imagine you have to mow a lawn. It's a really big lawn. Imagine you've got to mow the lawn of Buckingham Palace or something. So it needs a few people to mow this lawn. One person isn't enough. So we might have some kind of relationship here where the time it takes to mow the lawn, we'll call that T, instead of with directly proportional, it being some number times the other thing, if it's inversely proportional, it'll be some number, don't worry too much about what the number is, let's say it's eight, divided by the other thing. So I'm going to say that N here is the number of people mowing the lawn, T is the time it takes, and because of the size of the lawn, it turns out that the time it takes is 8 divided by the number of people. Let me give you some examples here and hopefully it'll make sense. So imagine you've got two people mowing the lawn. So actually we'll start with a T. So when two people mow the lawn, N is going to be 2. So the time it takes will be 8 divided by 2 which will be four hours. But if we doubled the number of people, just like we were doubling the number of hours here from three to six, if we double the number of people mowing the lawn from two to four, so the number of people is now gonna be four, then the time it takes, eight divided by four, is now two. So hopefully you can see, if you double the number of people from two to four, you're halving the time. It was four hours for two people to mow the lawn, but it's only two hours for four people to mow the lawn, which again hopefully makes sense. If you've got twice as many people doing the job, it should take half as long. And again, if you've got three times as many people doing the job, then it would take three times less. So that's what inversely proportional means. It's important though to connect the equations with the ideas. So if two things are proportional, it means one thing is some number times the other thing. If they're inversely proportional, it means one thing is a number divided by the other thing. Now, there's a couple of symbols we sometimes use when it comes to describing proportionality questions. Let me uh, rub this out and I'll give you an example of two different kinds of proportional questions that they're likely to give you. So hopefully you get the concepts now, but actually answering the questions can be a little bit tricky until you've been shown how to do it. I should say once you've done this, once you know how to do it, this is a pretty easy topic. You shouldn't struggle with it once you've got it. So, first example, imagine you've been told, we'll go back to the pay question, that the number of, or the amount you get paid for doing a certain job is proportional to the number of hours. Now they might write that in words, yep, the amount of pay is proportional to the number of hours you work, or they might write it in symbols, and the way they would do that is they would say P, 
let's say, the amount you get paid, is proportional. And the symbol for proportional is like a fish. It kind of looks a bit like that. The fish must always swim to the left, though. That's quite important. You can't do it the other way around. So that means P is proportional to the number of hours you work, let's say. Now, if you ever see that anywhere, it's no good to you, as it stands. You can't do any maths on this. What you need to do is convert it into an equation. So wherever you see that proportional sign, you can always replace it with an equal sign as long as you stick a constant on the other side. So if P is proportional to H, then P is equal to some constant, I'm going to call it K, times the other thing, the H in this case. So K, I don't know why, you could use any letter you like, K for constant maybe, <laughs> but they always tend to use K. So whenever you see that, that's the first thing you have to do is replace the proportional sign with equals K times the other thing. But as I say, you can pick any letter you like. So as well as giving you this bit of information, possibly in words, possibly with a proportional sign, they will also then give you an example. And they'll say something like, when you work for five hours, you get paid 35 pounds, let's say. So they give you some information, and then they'll say, if you worked for seven hours, how much would you get paid? And you have to work it out. The first thing you always have to do with this having converted the proportional into some equation with a k in it, is you have to work out what the k is. And that's why they're giving you this information here. You replace the h and the p with the numbers they've given you, and then you can work out what the k is. So in this case, p is 35, when h is 5. So it's going to be equal to 5 times k. And then you just rearrange to find out what k is. In this case, we divide both sides by 5. So k is going to be 35 divided by 5, gives you 7. So once you've worked out what k is, you replace the k from the equation you wrote down with the number it turns out to be. So in this case, p is going to be equal to 7h. Yep, k is 7 as we found. And now you can answer the question they've actually given you. So they want to know what the pay is when you work 7 hours. So because you know what the constant is, you just replace the h by 7 and you work it out. So in this case, P is going to be 7 times 7 hours, so you'll get paid £49. Woohoo! Alright, so that's how you do it. The important thing is you replace the proportional sign with an equals, some constant times the other thing, shove in the numbers for the information given you to work out the constant, and then you can work out the actual question they've asked. Alright, so that was a proportional example. Let me give you an example now with an inverse proportion. So we'll go back to the mowing the lawn example. So imagine they told you that the time it takes to mow a lawn is inversely proportional to the number of people mowing the lawn. Alternatively, they might write it in symbols. So in this case, the time it takes to mow the lawn, the way they'll write it is proportional to 1 over the number of people mowing the lawn. So there's no special symbol for inversely proportional. If you want to write down inversely proportional, you write proportional to 1 over that thing. But again, we can't use this proportional sign in maths. The first thing you do when you see that is you must convert it to an equation. So t will now be equal to, and it's going to be some constant k times 1 over n. But if you're multiplying a fraction by a constant, it just multiplies the number on the top. k times 1 will give you k on the top of the fraction. So this ends up being k divided by n. So again, whenever you see this, you must always convert it straight into this. It's going to be equal to some constant k divided by whatever the thing is that they've put there. In this case, the number of people mowing the lawn. Then they'll give you an example. So they might say, when two people mow the lawn, if n is 2, it takes 3 hours. So t would be 3. And they'll ask you a question, say, if 3 people mow the lawn, how long will it take? Well, same thing again, you use the example they've given you, shove in the numbers to work out what k is. You must work out what k is first. So in this case, t is going to be 3 equal to k divided by n is 2. Rearrange to find out what k is. So we're dividing by 2, the opposite is we multiply by 2. So multiply by 2 on both sides. k is going to be 3 times 2 is 6. Shove that back in the equation. So the full equation, now that we know what k is, is that t equals 6 divided by n. 
then use the information they've given you to actually answer the question. So they're saying, well, if three people mow the lawn, n is going to be three, t is going to be six divided by three. Six divided by three is two. So when three people are mowing the lawn, it will take two hours. So that's how you do the inversional proportional question. It's exactly the same way as you do the proportional one. It's just that if it's inversely proportional, it's going to be one over here. So you're going to have a k over there. But the method here is identical. Now there's one last thing I should say, and that is sometimes they can say that one thing is proportional not to another thing by itself, but maybe to something else squared or cubed or any other combination. So just very quickly before we finish, if they tell you that y is proportional to x squared, let's say, then in that case you do exactly the same thing. You replace the proportional sign with an equals some constant k times the other thing. It's just that this time the other thing happens to be squared. But it doesn't make any difference. If they tell you what x and y are, you can still work out what k is. Yeah? If x is 1 when y is 3 or something, you just shove in 1 there, shove in 3 there, rearrange to find k, and you do it exactly the same way as you do anything else. So just realize if they say it's proportional to x squared, you need an x squared there. But otherwise, as I say, it's exactly the same. My name is Jonathan Hicks, and you're watching Teach Me Maths. Mm -hmm.